Hey gamers, welcome back to the channel. This is another guide video. This one is for Xenophage. All updates to the quest will be in the pinned comment. To start the quest, you have to go to where Aeris chills looking over the pyramid ship. To get there, follow the path on screen, loading into Sara's Harbor. Once you get to the place where Aeris usually stands, there's going to be four statues on the right and left. You need to activate the statues in the order shown on screen, starting with the first one on the right, the second one on the right, then the last one on the left, and then the first one on the left. And then you can go to the chest to start the quest. The first part of the quest is going to have to anchor yourself to light and emerge from the dark. So go to the anchor of light. You're going to want to go to this building shown on screen now, where there's an interactable icon to pick up a light of fire. This light of fire, you need to light six torches around the area, starting first here in the same room. Follow the path on screen to get to number two, and then follow the path on screen to get to number three. From three, four is going to be on the tower area. Five is going to be over in this direction where the fire is. And then six is gonna be in the disc building. Once you have lit in all the torches, go over to the indicator that's on your screen and emerge from the dark. This is going to give you the next quest, the Pathfinder. This is going to require four paths to be found in each of the lost sectors of each of the areas of the moon. So we're going to start off Anchor of Light in the Communion Lost Sector. Go there, kill everything, kill the boss, kill everything in the room, and then go to the opened door in the back. You're going to have this puzzle in front of you. Follow the steps on screen. But if you want to hear them, start shooting bottom left, then shoot bottom right, then shoot top mid, and then top mid. Just for reference, this is a light on, light off kind of puzzle, and you want all the symbols to match the one above it. Interact with the chest once you complete it, and you get one map fragment. Next, you need to go to the next law sector. This is K1 Logistics in Archer's Line. You're going to shoot middle, then you're going to shoot mid right, and then you're going to shoot top left. After shooting top left, you're going to shoot bottom left. Once all the A's ruins have appeared, the chest will spawn and you can interact to get the next path fragment. Next, this is the crew quarters lost sector with the puzzle being here. This one is going to be long. This is the one that worked for us and this is the one we're going to recommend since I do not know if there's any other options. If there is, I will pin it in the first comment. But follow these steps on screen. Do not watch the gameplay since some of it's kind of choppy. But you can shoot mid left, top right, bottom right, bottom right, top middle, top middle, bottom middle, 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 and then all nine. When I say all nine, I mean one by one, shoot all nine. If you know Rubik's Cube logic, then this kind of makes sense to you. Pretty much you're rotating through all of the possible solutions to convert all symbols into the next symbol. Once you do that, get the chest and you get this path fragment. Next, you're going to go to the Revelations Lost Sector. It's going to be behind the store right away. This one is kind of complicated. You're going to shoot left mid, middle, middle, left mid, bottom mid, middle, right mid, and then top mid to finish it off. After that, pick up the path fragment and you got the descent. This one's going to need to go beneath the harbor built for Sorrow, AKA Sorrow's Harbor. So launch the dungeon. And once you finish the first encounter, you run into the wall of doors. Look for the door that does not have a symbol above it, one of the ruins, and go to that door. You can use these platforms to jump up to get to the second level of doors. And once you get over there, just hop over the door. If there's a chance where you don't know how to do the first encounter, I will have a guide up shortly on how to do the dungeon, but you can probably just Google it and find your answer. Pretty much every sword has a certain role in taking out the enemy. Once you go in the door, you'll get this and reveal the path's end. This one's going to have you go to the next path end's location during the Pharaoh's Stand Guard, aka the gigantic ogres that haunt your dreams. So during the ogre encounter, go to the far left where this pit is, and there'll be this little ruin inscribed in the ground. Hold E to view the path, and it'll summon these floating platforms, leading to, again, another light of fireball. Go over there, pick up the fireball, and you're going to need to bring this to the right side of the encounter. So make your way over there. I don't have the exact path on screen since it's kind of a maze, but make your way over to the side where you can see this kind of wall of doors with the shadow keep uh, 
theme. So once you get over the side, you'll see a door that kind of looks like this, and it'll have the two plates from earlier. Light the fire in both plates. I only got one right here because they're shooting me, but the other one's to the right of the door. Only one of these doors activates, so make sure you have the right one. Once you light both doors, the door will open, and you'll get the Slay Volmir, the Tempted. During the boss fight, you're going to have to get buffs to damage the boss. In the first room, you can check what symbols correspond to which element. You're going to see on the left side of your screen a buff. It's going to say either Fury, Thunderous, Abyssal, or Neutral, Dread. That corresponds in the main room to what symbols above it. As you can see on the screen, in each corner is an element and above it's a symbol. When you get that Dread, you need to dunk the ball of fire from the center to that symbol above it. So for example, right here I have Thunderous Dread. So I'm going to go back to the main room and check what symbol was Arc. So Arc I see is a parachute symbol, that's what we called it. And the parachute symbol was in the bottom left of the map. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to dunk my ball of fire. This is going to give me thunderous vengeance. This will only allow me to deal damage to the boss with an arc weapon. As you see here, recluse does nothing, but Wendigo, an arc weapon, can damage the boss. Next, another example is the abyssal. The abyssal I see was A. The A ruin was in the back left of the boss room. So I'm going to skirt, skirt over to the back left, dunk my ball, and get the abyssal vengeance, allowing me to deal void damage. The fury dread was the X. The X is in the back right of the room. So I'm going to go dunk my ball of fire down there and get the Vengeance of Fury. Allow me to do fire damage. Neutral is just to the right of the entrance and that allows me to deal neutral damage, AKA primary weapons in the first slot. Like Izanagi's Burden, a really great weapon. After you kill the boss, you're going to get the Finality Quest Step, which simply says, go return to Eris. Once you return to Eris, you can pick up the Xenophage. Thanks for everyone for watching, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate all the support I get, and if you can share this with anyone else, I'd also appreciate it. Again, less watching, more playing, and getting your Xenophage. I'd like to personally thank Weston and Raid Secrets for helping us out.